Bruchim Aboyim. Topic tonight is uh, more or less. If someone were to ask you, what do you want, more or less? I think the first thing a person seems to think, most people think they want more. It seems like that's what we always want. But again, the real question should be, what is it that it is? What is someone offering? So if you're at the deli counter, uh, you want an extra ounce on the scale. On the other hand, if you're at the pharmacy, what you want him to do is make sure it's exactly what it's supposed to be. He might kill you if he's a nice guy and gives you a little extra uh, medicine into uh, the pill. So, for the most part, I think that people want more when it comes to things. Everybody would like to be a little richer, be a little smarter, a little younger, a little prettier. Uh, that all sounds pretty good. But is that really the case? Is more really better? In Pirkei Avot, in the Ethics of the Father, in chapter 2, it says, Hillel says, that increasing flesh increases worms, increasing possessions increases worry, increasing the numbers of wives, again, back in the days of polygamy, increases sorcery, increasing maidservants increases lewdness, increasing manservants increases thievery. That's the one side. On the other hand, but increasing Torah increases life. Increasing insidious study increases wisdom. Increasing counsel increases understanding. Increasing charity increases peace. So everything's relative as to whether more or less is the way to go. And where we think especially more money, uh, being smarter, and yet we see that Torah tells us quite the opposite. We see that the forefathers... Abram Avinu was the first person he asked, first being to be called a zakain, an elder. He actually asked for gray hair and wrinkles. Yitzchak was the first person who was sick, he was blind, he asked for sickness. Yaakov asked for a deathbed experience. Strange. Why would the forefathers ask for these type of things? And yet they're very logical. Abram Avinu asked for old age. When a person looks in the mirror and starts to see wrinkles and a little bit of gray, he realizes that the t clock is ticking. I always say that when you go on vacation and you go for a week, first three days, you know, you're relaxed, you're glib, everything's very laid back. And the fourth day you wake up and you're in a panic. You only have three days left. And all of a sudden you run around like a chicken with your head cut off and you're up at at, at the break of dawn and up all night. I mean, you have so much to do. And when you stop and think about it, what's the difference between the first three days and the last three days? The answer is nothing. It's just all of a sudden it's a wake-up call. So, gray hair, wrinkles, wake-up call. You don't have forever. It's time to get it together. Yitzhak Avinu, Yitzhak, our father, asked for sickness. Because when a person is healthy and everything is going well, he forgets that there's a God in the world. There's no atheist in a foxhole. When a person gets sick, all of a sudden, he starts thinking about God. And Yaakov, deathbed experience, really, we kind of would like to leave this world quickly and easily. But it's really not kind. Because there are things that we need to get in order, there are things we need to say to people. And I always believe that a person should hear his own eulogy, that he shouldn't have to hear it when he's in a box, that his life should be that eulogy, that people should talk to him and open their, their hearts and their mouths to what they, he needs to hear to help him on the journey. And even though it would be easier to leave quickly, it's really kinder in all regards to spend a minute, tarry a bit, to be able to say goodbye and again, that's what Yaakov Avinu did. As we know, he blessed his sons before he died. The first time we see that. Smarter. Who wouldn't want to be smarter? And yet we see that Hannah, Shmuel, Samuel, the prophet's mother, who was barren and prayed for a child, she asked for a normal child. Because a child who is gifted, a child who is a genius, has baggage. So what we see as being something that's an advantage sometimes is really an, a, a, something that's really not an advantage. Younger. 
you know, as you get older, you learn a lot. Being younger, you've got youth, but youth, youth is wasted on the young. The truth is that there's a great deal to be learned by living. Someone who's better looking. I have cashiers in my restaurants. I really don't like hiring good-looking cashiers. They're very slow at the register. Every guy that comes in tries to pick them up. So they do a lot of talking to them. They waste a lot of time. Someone's plain, they're able to take care of business. And again, supreme, being prettier. All of these things that seem to be advantages are many times really roadblocks that you have to deal with that other people who don't have these don't have to do with. The, there was a professor of philosophy at a large university. It was interesting. He came in and he put a gallon jar on his desk. Class looked and he took rocks and he filled up the gallon jar with rocks. And he said to the class, is it filled? And everyone said yes. He then took out a jar, another one, and filled with pebbles. And he poured the pebbles over the rocks to the top. He said, is it filled now? And they said yes. He then took another container filled with sand. And he poured the sand over the rocks and the pebbles to the top. And he said, is it filled now? And they said yes. And he turned to them and he said, this is really your life. Your life consists of rocks and pebbles and sand. The rocks are the important things in life. God, family, friends, health. Pebbles, things like job, house, car, things like that. And the sand, your recreation, your leisure time, everything else. So if you were to put the sand in first, be no room for pebbles or stones. And the only way you get to put in all three is in the order that they are. But rocks come first. And a person needs to know that more of what's important is really the key to life and understanding what that is. In reality, what's important what we're lacking becomes more important than what we have. If we have something, it's all of a sudden not as important because we have it. I remember there was a friend of mine who was getting married. And being the philosopher that I am, I thought I'd give him some great advice. And I said to him, as he was pondering about his future wife, I said, if she has, I said, you just need to write down on a piece of paper the ten most important things to you. If she has five of those, you're doing great. And I felt pretty proud of myself. I thought that was pretty intelligent. And I didn't get too far away before I turned around and went back to him and told him what an idiot I am. You see, because when you write down those ten things, you're going to write down ten things you don't have. <laughs> if someone asks you what the most important thing in life to you, no one says air. And yet without air, you're dead. Water. These are not things that are going to get on the list. So when someone asks you to write down things that are important to you, it's always things you don't have. And those things that you don't have become so important that they trump things that are really very important to you. But since this woman already has them, you're not going to write them down. So this becomes the key. That person needs to realize what actually, what are the rocks in life? When you're falling through the ice, what is important to you? If it's important to you while you're trying to get out of that cold water, if it still has importance to you, then it's then it, that's something that becomes a goal for life. If it was your child there with you, you'd be worrying about that child. Things that are not important, whether you have a green car or a blue car, whether it's a one year older or newer, how big your bank account is, all these things are not going to be important while you're going through the ice. And that becomes the key. It says in Pirkei Avot, again, Ezeh HaOsher, who's a rich person, it says, Sameach Bechelko, someone who's happy with what he has. Contentment. It's not more or less. 
it's knowing that we really have to believe that there is a God that runs the world and he gives us exactly like the pharmacist what we need for our lives. And wherever we are, whatever we have, especially if we're doing what we need to do, now we need to do our part. Can't sit on a rock and expect it to happen. But if we're participating and we're doing what we need to do, then God's doing what he needs to do. He's a benevolent father. He's giving us that measure that we need. People think, if only I was wealthy. Statistics have proved that 70% of the people who win lotteries within seven years are broke. And I can promise you that they have nothing but misery as they're going through it. And can you imagine someone who had millions and now has nothing? Better that you had nothing from the beginning. To, get, to have it and then lose it is the worst. So we always think that, that got, we could do it better. But if you really have true faith in God and believe that God has put you in this world and has given you a mission, then whatever you're given, Sameach Bechelko, if a person can find joy with what he has, the place he is, truth of the matter is, the best things in life are free. To hold a baby, to have a good wife, to have good friends, to be healthy. All of these things, and they're free. It doesn't make a difference how much money you have. There are many wealthy people that would give up everything they own just to have a day without pain. All of these things. So Sameach Bechelko, and not only that, in, in Hebrew it's amazing. Sameach Bechelko is present tense. That means to say being happy with what you have means at the moment that you are. By that I mean, if someone were to give you $100,000, you'd be happy. Before he gave it to you, maybe you weren't happy. After he gives it to you, maybe you want another 100 or more. But when that moment that he gives it to you, in that moment, in the present, you're very happy. And that's where a person needs to be, in the moment. Enjoying things as they are. Not more or less, just right in the middle. That needle is perfect. Because we think that well, only I had more pleasure. And the truth of the matter is, pleasure is like a fire. If you get too close, you get burned. Get too far away, it's useless. So what you need to do is find a sweet spot. Just close enough, but not too close. We have a real problem as people. The second we get close enough, we inch up a little closer. And all the things in life that are unimportant, we try to get more and more of. And we become addicted. And what we want is more than we really need. You can only eat so much, no matter how much food there is. And then you get sick. Most of the diseases in the world are from obesity, from eating too much. You can only sleep so much. And after that, you're just going to lay there and just waste time person likes drinking, you'll pass out. You can't take more pleasure when it comes to goodness in this world. Then the truth of the matter is more is great. You can't be nice enough. You can't be giving enough. You can't be happy enough in sharing with other people. You really cannot fill the container. The more that you give, it sounds backwards. People want to take. The more you take, the worse you feel. The more you give, the happier you are, the better you are, the more content you are. And it gives you what is known in this world as a shame tove, a good name, which is the most priceless thing a person can have. That which you earn by taking more of the rocks and less of the sand and making life something that's worthwhile and somehow making a difference so that that jar is as it should be. First the rocks, then the pebbles, and then the sand. And enjoy them all. Enjoy them all. God gave us this world for that purpose. But only in the proper order. If we do it in the wrong order, then all of a sudden, we've missed the whole idea of what life's about and the beauty that God has given us. To know that it's not more or less. It's knowing to be content with what we have. And if you're going to strive for more, it's always to be better, to be happier, to be more giving, to be a more godly person. May God bless you all. Have a great Shabbos, and thank you for coming.